Are Man City favourites to sign Erling Haaland? Is he not going to sign for Chelsea? Can Chelsea not lure him to West London? Are Chelsea making big movements, however, in the summer window? Not just for incomings, but also for selling plays, for loaning out plays. It's going to be a mega window for Thomas Tuchel. Going to be exciting times for us Chelsea fans. Will Oscar be making a return back to Chelsea, back to West London? We'll have to wait and see. I'll also be reviewing the new leaked home kit for next season. The 21-22 home kit. I'll be reviewing it, giving my thoughts, opinions. And of course, I'll also be discussing... But before I do get into it, make sure you smash like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And without further ado, let's get straight into today's news, Daily Villa. Starting off with the first story, and it is in regards to Erling Haaland. Now again, I know I speak about this guy on every single news daily. But I'll give you guys the latest updates. If there's an update on a specific topic, on a specific player, I'm going to give you guys a swoop. I'm going to give, give you guys the latest news. And um, well, I do give you news, it's going to be like from top tier T1 journalist or publications, so your Christian Falk, your CF Bynes, your Fabrizio Romanos, your Athletics. No, this Daily Star Sun rubbish nonsense. It's going to be top tier stuff. That's why, you know, to give you guys the latest update, make sure there's actually reliable content, reliable news. But what Christian Falk is saying in regards to Erling Haaland is that Man City are favourites to sign Erling Haaland if Borussia Dortmund decide to sell, but they don't want to sell him in 2021. Now, we know that there is a big possibility Erling Haaland will leave this summer. You know, there's a lot of links with his agent, Mina Raola, for a, club, for a club like Borussia Dortmund. If Borussia Dortmund do not secure Champions League qualification this season, there is a very high likelihood that Erling Haaland will leave the summer. You know, he's too good to be playing Europa League football. He's simply too good to be playing Europa League football for his level, his calibre of the quality of player that he is. And it's completely understandable, and that's why you've got Europe's elite clubs like your your Bayern Munich, your Chelsea, your Man City, your Man United, PSG's in for him because... He's available at a fantastic price. I know it's going to be expensive and you know extortion is going to be north of 100 million pounds. But you know for the level of play that he is, the age that he's at, the potential that he could reach, the ceiling that he has, and the attributes, he's a monster in front of goal. So it's completely understandable. And I said this to you guys multiple times: Chelsea are not favourites to sign Haller, not because we're not a big club, but because there's so many clubs in for him that you know, especially with the city, you know, situation Man City is, they're pretty much guaranteed Champions League qualification. They're pretty much guaranteed Champions League qualification, and if you look at the situation, and if you look at the situation with Chelsea, and we haven't yet secured Champions League football, we haven't been at the pinnacle of the Premier League football for a good four or five years. We're not at that level of Man City yet. I do believe we will achieve that in the next one or two years of the project that we have. We now have a world-class manager in place. We have the finances, we have the ambition, and we have the quality of squad to get to Man City's level. But it's more of working with the squad in, you know, instilling, implementing a proper attacking style of play, and that's going to take time. You know, they've had Pep for you know five, six years, so they're already further advanced in their projects. And of course, Sergio Aguero leaving on a free this summer. They need a world-class striker now. Are they going to go for Messi? In this COVID climate, this COVID pandemic, who knows? Who knows? But Haaland is definitely on the list. I don't think even on the Man City favourites, will they deal with an agent like Mina Raola? I'm not sure because they're they're a bit like Chelsea in a sense that they don't want to splash massive fees on agents, and it's completely understandable. Mina Raola is a super agent, and your Donna Rumors, etc. So it's a case of who wants Haaland more financially. You know, whoever is willing to pay Mina more money, money. He will drive his client, i.e. Haaland, in this specific context to that club. You know, if Roman really wants Haaland, and listen, when Roman wants something, nine times out of ten, he gets it. But if he really wants Haaland, he'll, you know, and he's willing to pay the agent fees, Mino will drive Haaland to Chelsea. You know, as I said, we have the ambition, we have the finances, we have the lure of London, something that, you know, Man City doesn't have. I'm not, I'm not disrespecting Manchester to City, but London has different poor power. It's, you know, it's one of the biggest cities, best cities in the world to live in. So we have that lure of London. The fact that we have a project, he's slots in right, he's a star of the team, whereas in Man City, you've got your De Bruyne's, etc. At Chelsea, you're a definite star of the team. And I think that, again, at Chelsea, it's more of a right fit. I think, personally, despite Man City being favourites because of where they are at the pinnacle of Premier League football, of course, they've also got the finances, I still think Chelsea are near the top. I know they're not the first choice or the favourites, but I think they are you know, up there in that sense. So I think that we definitely have a strong chance. But we'll have to wait and see. It depends on a lot of external factors. Are Dortmund going to get Champions League qualification? You know, are Dortmund going to be in the negatives in regards to finances in the summer? We don't know the situation with COVID. How badly does Roman want Haaland? You know, all these factors matter. Are Chelsea going to get Champions League? So all these are important. These are all important. But 
Let's move on to the next story, and it is in regards to Oscar. Now, it isn't more transfer links, it's more of what he said in the interview. He came out in an interview, and he's been talking for Chelsea for quite some time. You know, sometimes, you know, sparsely, sparsely in interviews, he talks about, you know, his admiration for Chelsea, that he would like to retire here and stuff. But basically, giving you guys the quote, she says, I support Chelsea. If I have a chance to finish my career at Chelsea, it's a dream for me. Of course, Chelsea don't like to buy too many older players, which is normal because it's a top team from Europe. But... I will try my best to fit uh, to be fit to finish there. Listen, do you know what it is of Oscar? Yeah, like for me, I'll always rate him. Like I'll, I'll, I'll always rate Oscar because I rate technical ballers. You know, technical ballers with high IQ, high intelligence. And, you know, he's naturally Brazilian, but the techers that he had, the way that his movement, his passing, his touches, his dribbling. The only problem I always had of Oscar was he was always inconsistent from my memory. He was always inconsistent, like... Some games would be a 10 out of 10 where he'd be playing like pretty much like the Bruyne is right now. And the other games would be an absolute passenger in the game, like a you know, finished Urzil. He would honestly it was so frustrating to see because you could see the talent and the potential he had there. And when he made this move to China, I was thinking, you've wasted your career for the money. And listen, I'm not gonna bash him for that because you know he he grew up in a poor favela group, and that's what a lot of Brazilians do. So I don't want to go into detail because I don't want the background of the situation. I think that again, money is a motivator. I don't want to bash him for it, but in terms of footballing potential, he did waste it. He never fulfilled his potential. I think that he never had the right manager for that. I think Antonio Conte and Mourinho, they turned him into a workhorse type of player. And he wasn't that. He needed like a Pep Guardiola or a Thomas Tuchel to unleash his full potential. And it's a shame, but he had the technique. He had the intelligence. He had the high IQ. Um, and listen, a lot of people say, you know, the ship sailed, he's finished and whatever. But listen, as a backup player... You know, to a Mason Mount, you know, can play in the FA Cup games, whatever. And listen, it, it's all nostalgia. Of course, he's not. He may not be good enough, but it would be nice to see Oscar at Chelsea. You know, I think I'll be I'll be for this move. I'm not sure how logistically or financially this would work. Would it be a loan move? Would it be a permanent? God knows. But it's nice to hear that Oscar has still has a lot of appreciation for Chelsea, and that he would actually like to you know finish his career back at the blue so that is really interesting and moving on moving on to an article actually released by Simon Phillips um, a bit of a journalist but he, he essentially releases all the news on Twitter and he has some various sources as well and he's saying that movement has started already behind the scenes as Chelsea and Thomas Tuchel start working on transfers Chelsea are expected to be one of the few busy clubs in the market this summer with the ongoing effects of the global pandemic, Chelsea are expected to be one of the few teams who will be very busy. There are a number of players whom the club and Thomas Tuchel will need to make decisions on selling with various contracts running low, the likes of Tammy Abraham, Andres Christensen and Antonio Rudiger, with all need to be addressed this summer, as it will be the last time the club could sell them for decent money if they are not signing new deals. Of course, there is also a subject of the goalkeeper, whether Kepa, Arifa Balaga is loaned or sold. Another squad player such as Kurt Zoom and Billy Gilmore We'll both want to know their futures as a club and again it's interesting i made this point in the in the intro and i said that it's a mega sum of this window but it's not how we all think it is in regards to incomes of course we are going to be looking at that but a lot of it's trimming down the squad and i, I said this a lot of times as well that thomas tuchel's greatest achievement this summer is going to be trimming down this squad and getting rid of the deadwoods because we have a world-class squad yes we do need a couple of one or two world-class additions still to really compete with Man City and you know on all fronts but we need to trim the squad we've got three left backs we've got five centre backs we've got three goalkeepers I mean we need to trim the squad down you know it's as simple as that we need to offload some players and it's not just to raise revenue and cash but it's a sense of we need to offload these players because you know we have too many numbers to submit to the Premier League squad next season so again and also we need to sort out their futures it's not fair on them as well from a personal perspective they need to be playing regular football. And if your third choice left back, how the hell are we going to get regular football? Look at an Emerson, for example. You've got Alonso and Chilwell battling out, and you've got Emerson stuck in the reserves. It's not fair for him. He's trying to play for the Italian team in the Euros. You have to be understanding. So, again, his greatest achievement is going to be offloading a lot of these dead woods, trimming down this squad, and then hopefully we can compete, as well as you know one or two world-class additions coming up in the summer window. Now, finally, the last point I want to talk about is a new kit, the new home kit that's been leaked for next season, the 21 slash 22 season. Uh, you've got it on your screen right now. You know what, yeah? I'll say this now. For me, it's a pink kit. You know, I've, I've seen the social media reaction, especially on Twitter, and a lot of people are not a fan of this. A lot of people, but I quite like it. Listen, I like the pattern. It's quite similar to this year's home kit in a sense that the colour looks a bit lighter. 
you've got the zigzag pattern as well you've got the yellow accent on the sides of the shirt obviously you've got the the golden tick and you've got the the golden um, you know outer coating of the badge as well and the three logos remain the same in white now here's my thoughts opinions right i like the kit but i still think it could be slightly improved i have no problem with the zigzag pattern the only issue is is I like the fact that they're trying to change it up and switch it by having the gold, you know, the gold coating, the gold colour around the Nike tick and the, the Chelsea logo. But if you're going to, you know, the Chelsea emblem, but if you're going to do that in gold, why don't you make the free logo in gold as well? So it all matches. I think that will look a lot better in, because you have gold up here and you got white here. I, I don't think it looks as good. I think if you made the free logo gold, then it would be a peng shirt. I might copy it. Obviously, what happens is kits grow on people. You know, we all thought the fur kit was trash, but a lot of people seem to have bought it. It grows on people. But what, what annoys me the most here is, especially on Twitter, I see so many graphic designers. They design some really good-looking, beautiful kits. Like, I'm talking stunning kits. I'm thinking the official club, the official people that work at night that design these kits are nowhere near as good. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So, if you made a pen kit, more people would buy it. It would increase your revenue. So, I don't understand how, you know, I don't understand why, um, you know, clubs don't hire, you know, good quality graphic designers. So, but for me, it's a good kit. It's something that I may consider purchasing. Would you buy it? Leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. If you'd enjoy this news, save it for two smash like buttons, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And I'll see all of you guys for my next video. Peace.